Hello, I'm Charles, and I'm a beekeeper that loves old beekeeping equipment. Today we're going to talk about these short-lived gooseneck smokers. Now, gooseneck is not a brand of smoker, but a style. This style transitioned smokers from the pointed tops of the Bingham and Quinby smokers and away from the cold blast smokers such as the Clark. These smokers are part of the transition to the more tapered tops that we see today on smokers. There are three brands that were sold in the United States. Those include the Crane, the Corneal, and the Kretschmer. Uh, today we'll discuss each and their lasting legacy. First is the Crane. The Crane smoker was named after James Irvin Crane of Middlebury, Vermont. He was an avid beekeeper and a Civil War veteran. You can occasionally see G.E. Crane and Son honey brochures online uh, from that era. Uh, that's him and his kids. Uh, Mr. Crane was a contemporary of the young A.I. Root and corresponded with him frequently. You can see little articles from him uh, inside of old copies of Gleanings from Bee Culture uh, during the 1880s. Uh, Mr. Crane, he kept more than 200 hives, and he really struggled with the small amount of fuel that smokers at the time could hold. Uh, furthermore, the Bingham and Quinby smokers at the time were just awkward to hold and use, and the Clark Cold Blast, it was hard to keep the smoker lit. So none of them were made for beekeepers that had that many hives. Uh, furthermore, he preferred a larger and sturdier smoker. There are two prime variants of this smoker. Its unique inlet is what really gives it away if you're trying to identify one. I adore the unique metal inlet on the crane. Typically, inlets on bellows are leather, and they do fail over time. This metal one, which appears on the patent, is a really cool innovation that I've never seen reintroduced in any other smoker. I recommend collectors be weary of later crane smokers, uh, specifically the ones with the shield, because they have asbestos on the inner shield. Uh, the asbestos on this particular smoker has been sealed. Next is the one with a legacy that lives on today, the Corneal. The Corneal smoker is named after Canadian beekeeper S. Corneal. Uh, S. Corneal is the founder of the Ontario Beekeepers Association in 1881. Mr. Corneal made recommendations to his friend A.I. Root based on the Quinby Double Blast, which he was a huge fan of. Mr. Corneal is credited for developing what's called the Corneal Principle, in which the shape of the gooseneck smoker would bring the ash and debris that would normally flout the smoker of the tip back inside, thus making better use of the fuel. Uh, I can't tell you how accurate that is. Uh, however, Mr. Corneal did not invent the smoker, and the smoker is named after him as a necronism. Uh, after his death in the early 1880s by Mr. A.I. Root, which his son Huber is credited as being the true inventor. The Corneal has the most lasting legacy as it transitioned to what became the Root Smoker. The Root Smoker is the most proliferated smoker brand thus far in American beekeeping. The Root Smokers were on the market mostly unchanged for 80 years. Only the Kelly Smoke Cloud seems to have been on the market unchanged for about as long. Uh, in a previous video, I showed off this copper corneal before the hinge on it changed uh, within a year or two. This is very close to the original patent. However, the corneal name has never died. American beekeeping equipment distributors kept calling them corneal smokers well into the 1810s. Even longer lasting was the use of the name abroad. In Australia, the original name stayed and the Pender brothers licensed both of the Corneal patents. This is a gooseneck Corneal Australian variant, and this is a brass later Corneal variant. Foreign licensees and sometimes blatant knockoffs of American smokers are common, and I do plan to do a video on this topic as it is very intriguing. This smoker died with the AI Root Company's transition out of being a B keeping equipment manufacturer in the 1980s. However, it lives on and 
practically every smoker that is used today. Last but not least are the Kretschmer smokers. The proper name for these smokers are the Champion Smokers. They were produced by the Kretschmer Manufacturing Company in Council Bluffs, Iowa. Edward Kretschmer, who founded the company, was born in Prussia and opened it in the 1880s. He too was a contemporary of AI Root and very closely emulated how he did business. The two companies were so close that Kretschmer manufactured AI Root equipment for the West Coast as it was much cheaper to have it created there in Iowa and shipped over to California. When Mr. Kretschmer retired, just after the First World War, the AI Root Company bought him out and established their Council Bluffs, Iowa facility. That facility existed there at least until 1982, according to my research. I was intrigued doing research as there are many more variants of the Champion Smoker than I realized. I have both the gooseneck and tapered top variants, but there is an older Bingham style variant that I have never seen, and now I know to look for it. Furthermore, they also came in two sizes. Just this month, Dr. Mangum published an article to the American Bee Journal about identifying the difference between a Kretschmer gooseneck smoker and a gooseneck Higginsville smoker. I was unaware there was a gooseneck variant of the Higginsville smoker. I highly recommend reading the article as it helped me ensure that I was classifying mine correctly. And it has begun my search for one of these Higginsvilles for my collection. I hope that you enjoyed learning about this brief but fascinating generation of bee smokers. I would also ask anyone out there that may have a Higginsville gooseneck or a Kretschmer Bingham style to please submit a photo to our Beekeeping Antiques group on Facebook. You will find a link down in the comment section. Whether you are a collector or an admirer, consider joining the group. We, we love having new folks and it is very intriguing to see all the different stuff that is out there. Uh, just this week, I got to learn about Sears Roebuck hives that were made out of aluminum in the 1950s. Well, please like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.